Hey guys, and welcome back to a new Navigation 3 video here for native Android and Compose multi-platform. As usual, for all these videos in this playlist, I will implement what I show you here in a Compose multi-platform project. But since it is pretty much the same for native Android with a few exceptions that I will then mention, this will be for both native Android and Compose multi-platform. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can actually navigate back with the result in Navigation 3. What this means is we will extend the code from the previous videos in case you've missed these and also don't want to watch these, you'll find a GitHub link to uh, the initial code here down below, which this video will build on top of. But we will have our settings screen that we will adjust as follows. We will see a button that says current setting default, whatever that means. That's not relevant here for this video, but we have some sort of setting that we can change. If we click on this current setting button, then we get to another screen, let's say the change setting screen, where we can now enter some sort of text. We could now enter something like, hello world. And the moment we now click save, we actually want to take this result from the screen, so whatever text we've entered, and bring this to the previous screen to know what we've actually entered here on this screen. So the moment we click save, you can see we get back to this screen with this result that we've transferred back to this screen. So let's take a look at how we can actually implement that. And for that, I would say, yeah, let's also put this in navigation here we will create something that we call a result store. So in the end, a storage for our results for navigation. And in the end, this result store will be nothing else than a simple map of keys and values that it manages here internally. This is also what we can define here. So private val results, where we can then assign certain uh, results into this map. So specifically, this will be a mutable map of any, so any key, mapped to any possibly null value. And then we really just need public functions that help us to read certain values of this map or insert new ones. And one particular result here could then have a specific key, let's say whatever key identifies the specific setting we've changed in this context. And the value would simply be what value that setting now is. So in our previous example, hello world. So we say, okay, we have a function that gives us some sort of type T called get result for a specific key of type any. And then returns us a nullable type T, which is just equal to results while accessing our key. And we cast that as our type T. Uh, this will give us the unchecked typecast uh, warning here, which you can safely ignore by hitting Alt Enter and adding this warning here to our get result function, I would say. So really just a public function that lets us access a specific key's value from this map. We can have the same function in order to just set a new value. So also T set result here we need to pass the key and the value of type t and we just say okay results at the key key will be equal to the value and we may want to have a function to remove a result so remove result we just pass in the key and the corresponding value will be removed by saying results remove so this is our super simple result store here that we will use in order to keep these results and then be able to reference these on the previous screen Something we should also take care of here is actually persisting this map here so that it would also survive process death on Android, that it also survives configuration changes in Android. Those are all the things <laughs> that we need to take care of here. We can do this by defining a saver here in a companion object. Saver and compose is nothing else uh, than a definition for how a certain type or how a certain object should be serialized and deserialized when that is simply needed. So we can say val saver is equal to a saver, which will save instances of result store. So in the end, what this means, whenever we want to save something like a result store here, for example, when using remember savable in Compose, then we want to save something, specifically our map from any to any nullable. So what this means is whenever we have remember savable block in Compose that stores a result store, then internally, we actually just store a map uh, that maps any to any. And then we have one save function where we can really just say, okay, it dot results dot to map because a map in, uh, is already serializable. So we don't need to define further logic here. And we have a restore function. So when we then actually have such a map, how do we take this map and restore such a result store instance again? Well, we can simply create a new result store instance and then reference, um, actually called apply. And then in this apply block, oops, simply reference the results of this fresh results store instance. And we put all the keys that we've restored here. So it, which is in the end, just a map any of any, which is the map that we've restored here after uh, maybe process death happened, for example. 
And then we can really just have a top level function here to remember such a result store and get an instance in Compose. Remember result store, which will be equal to remember savable as I've mentioned. So the moment we use remember savable, uh, the value that we remember will really also be persisted across configuration changes, across process death. But we also therefore need to, to assign such a saver here. This will be a composable function, alt enter. And let's define the saver that we need here. You can see here, there is an overload that takes in the saver, which is nothing else than result store dot saver. And now inside this remember savable body, we can create a fresh new result store instance. And since we've just assigned the saver here, this is the logic that will be used in order to save and persist such an entry, such a result store instance. Otherwise, if we wouldn't have defined the saver and assigned it here, remember savable would have given us an issue because it wouldn't know, okay, that's kind of an arbitrary class. How do I now serialize that? What this assumes is that these entries and values of this map are actually also serializable, so are mostly primitives, strings, or just other elements that Compose knows how to serialize. If not, you would have to define a custom saver, which gets more complex in that case. But in any case, uh, what I can just recommend here, just like with normal navigation arguments, keep these arguments as simple as possible. Don't pass very complex data, maybe whole classes between uh, different destinations. While you can make that work, it's usually just uh, much simpler to just keep the minimum data needed and pass that around. So for example, instead of passing a whole to-do element to another screen, just pass the idea of that to-do to another screen and then reload the details from a local database instance, for example. So now that we have this result store, we can define our second setting screen where we can then change a setting by going to screen, maybe having a change setting screen, make this a file, composable, change setting screen. And as I've shown you, this is really nothing else than a simple screen that contains a text field and a button and will then give us an on save lambda when we've actually saved the corresponding element. So when we've tapped save. Inside here, we will then have a column that will get a modifier, actually the modifier we've passed to the screen, fill max size, and let's just make sure we center everything in here horizontally. Horizontal alignment is alignment center horizontally. And the vertical arrangement is arrangement center as well. As the body of this column, we can then define our text field where we say, okay, we maybe keep some sort of text state internally here for simplicity. So var text, make this by remember. So we create a compose state, mutable state off. And initially that will be an empty string. We can then hit Alt Enter here on this by keyword to import this delegate. Actually do this twice, import operator set value. And then you can see the error will be gone. This text can then be referenced here for the value parameter and on value change will simply change this text to whatever is the new text. So it in this lambda scope. We may also want to give this text field a modifier to make it fill oops, uh, the, the whole of this column. We could also give it some padding here of let's say 16 dp. And lastly, what we can do is we can put a button below that should really save our text and therefore navigate us back, pop the screen from the back stack, but also deliver the result at the same time. So we say button on click will be on save. So we just call our little callback lambda here and the text will be a text composable saying save. Now, normally, if we would want to use this composable, you would be like, okay, we actually have this callback. Couldn't we just also pass this text here as a callback and then get a reference to that in the previous screen? Well, let's take a look at how this would look like by going to our navigation route. And here in this entry provider, we now need to define this new route. Let's first of all, go to route and define that we now have a new screen, duplicate this settings route. And this will now be the change setting route can also be a data object since it doesn't take any parameters. And then we can reference this here in our navigation route in this entry provider here at the very bottom below our settings block. We can also duplicate here just that we reference the change setting route here and then say, okay, here we call our change setting screen composable where we have to use and reference our on save lambda. And here we now actually get the text that we've saved. But the thing is, we are now inside this change setting entry. How do we get this text and pass it to this actual setting screen instance? Because here for this button, it's actually not a button yet, but we need a button in the setting screen where we say, okay, we display the current setting, which can be default by default, but we now need to take this text and somehow display it here. And you can see 
this lambda scope here is actually not inside the same scope of this box, of this setting screen, which is why we can simply take this text and somehow reference it here, since this screen is in its own navigation entry. And that is where our result store comes into play. So in our change setting screen, let's actually pass down this result store instance. And now with this result store instance, what we can do is when saving this, we don't just invoke on save, but we say result store and we simply set a result. We set the result for a specific key that we can define completely on our own. We can become creative here, but anything that just identifies which setting we've changed, let's just say, okay, main setting, for example, with an underscore and the value of that, so the value of what we've changed this to is simply our text state. If we do that, and we then also say after that we trigger on save, so we know we need to navigate back and pop the back stack, now without passing this string here separately to this lambda, and then taking a look in this, uh, not result store, but navigation route, here when we save, or when we have saved the specific instance, we now actually just want to pop the back stack and go back to our settings route. So we can really just take our navigator instance and say go back. Furthermore, we now need to pass this result store. This result store, we can actually now initialize up here at the scaffold level by saying remember result store. And this is now an instance that we can perfectly shear. So it's really as easy as that to just pass this down to the change setting screen like that. No more errors. And the result store can also be used by the setting screen itself. Let's maybe also take this and put it in a separate composable. Actually, first of all, duplicate the change setting screen just to our settings screen. So we just stay consistent here. Then we would have a lambda on change setting click when we click on our button to change the setting. And we can really just take this box now for the setting screen's contents, replace our content. And here, when this button is clicked, we just want to say on change setting click is the lambda we invoke. We reference our modifier here. And we need to also rename this composable so there is no naming conflict, settings screen. And lastly, we of course now want to display the setting that we've changed it to from our change setting screen here in this setting screen. And now we can really just reference this from our result store because both screens suddenly get the same result store instance, therefore work with the same internal map that will be also persisted as you've seen. So we can really just say setting is equal to result store dot get result for our key that we've chosen right here, main setting, take this and the instance of a result we expect here will be a string since the main setting holds a string value. And then here for the current setting, we can say we use a placeholder, pass in our setting. And if that doesn't exist, we default to the text default. Then this must be called in our navigation route, settings screen, and also pass in the same results to instance. This is important here that you don't call remember results to here and remember results to here because then both screens would get an independent results to instance with independent maps. So the maps wouldn't be sheared, but constructing this results to outside this nav display will work. And then we can say on change setting click. Well, here we just want to navigate to our change setting screen with our navigator that navigate and we say change setting. Well, let's try this out. We run this. By the way, we also saw that uh, this is currently unstable, the result store, which we could fix by annotating this with stable, since this is in fact a stable class. But I don't want to go too deep here into these compose internals. Uh, that is what we have courses and mentorships about. But the app apparently has been launched here. And if we now go to settings, then we see our current setting default button. Clicking on that will give us our text with a save button. And if we now click in here, so we get the focus and we type something and then clicking on save, we expect that our previous button says current setting colon something. And that is what happens. So this is a very flexible approach. Now Google in their navigation three recipes, so these little bits of code snippets, they actually use a composition local, which we could also use if you really want to globally access a specific result store. So you could also use this to, of course, provide this result store at the root of your compose hierarchy and then use this for any types of results and access these in any type of screens, not just the previous screen. Usually I think this is overkill because if you really need to pass a result back to the previous screen, then this result store will do it. And if you need to share data across the app, 
then chances are you don't want to use a composition local because they have to be treated with care. They are not so optimal. They create a lot of coupling between the actual values they hold and your entire compose hierarchy after all. So in that case, uh, maybe something like a shared view model or so, or even persistent storage may be the better choice here. And if you actually apply these concepts from these videos here in your own projects, and uh, while watching the video, everything makes sense, but the moment you try to apply this in your own project, where you're suddenly not guided anymore by an instructor, you feel lost, you feel confused, then I can understand you. And that's exactly what we have our mentorship program for. So in this program, over several months, we would work together here on a one-on-one -on -one basis where you are in the end pushed to build a real-world product while then getting code reviews for every single line of code you write. And you always have the option to ask all your questions and get a timely answer. If that is something that sounds interesting to you, you'll find a link to this program down below. Apply. It's really application only. We keep this in a very close environment and only work together with people where we also enjoy working together with, but where this is, of course, also a big help and really makes sense. Applying is completely free. If you simply apply, then it could be that either me or someone from my team will give you a call to just get some more context of your situation and see in how far we can really help you out with that. So link is below. Other than that, thanks so much for watching. See you back in the next video. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye.